they're coming out with a bunch of different colors for the GRN, kind of kind of cheering it up a little bit. You know, you could you could say that the uh, the SOG folding lineup is a little bit dreary uh, historically. I think you know they're they're meant for use and uh, maybe not so much uh, uh, in terms of aesthetic has gone into them. Uh, and now it's, it looks like they're kind of simplifying the design a little bit, uh, removing some of the SOG uh, kind of billboarding that they're famous for. And uh, putting some colored GRN on these handles and just kind of, I don't know, classing them up a little bit. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Hello, Knife Junkie, and welcome to episode number 75. It's our midweek edition of the Knife Junkie podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the podcast. We've got a lot to talk about today. As we always do, the supplemental edition, our midweek episode, when we uh, get to hear from Bob talking about uh, new knives in his collection, as well as uh, knife life news, what's happening in the knife world, and, and other knife stuff that uh, that we want to chat about. The uh, Knife Junkie podcast is the place for knife newbies like myself and knife junkies like you to learn all about knives and knife collecting, and we're so glad that you are here with us as we begin our 2020 year, our, mm. our, our new year here on the podcast, and uh, looking forward to it, Bob. Yeah, well, uh, I'm recording this podcast from my flying car, Jim, and uh, <laughs> I love 2020. This is a great place to be. Right, and uh, what is that? We only have to work like one or two days a week or something <laughs> yeah. like that? And we all carry knives like my new knife, the Columbia River Knife and Tool Provoke. What a great segue. <laughs> hey, so did you did you buy that for your Christmas present to yourself? Or? I did. You may oh. you may remember I was lamenting the fact and actually kind of shocked that I hadn't gotten myself a Christmas knife or two or three, uh, and Christmas was already over. And uh, you know, on Thursday night knives the other night, Alex uh, busted out Alex Tissot busted out his uh, Joe Caswell custom morphing karambit, and um, you know I've seen that knife before, and it's it's definitely uh, definitely turned my head a couple of times. But having him pull it out and <laughs> flaunt it, that sounds, you know, however that sounds. Right. But uh, having him show it off really got me uh, interested. So I, I took a look. I knew I wasn't going to get a Caswell, uh, but the CRKT version of it, uh, from all accounts, is is pretty excellent. And um, Jim, I just trust a knife that costs $200. What, what, <laughs> do I, what can I say? But I found it for 150 bucks on Amazon, and I already had a cart going with things I was getting for my daughter. And, Amazing. And, and for other people, you know, because I'm such a good guy. So I threw it in there, and uh, it showed up yesterday. And uh, it's a very cool knife. If people don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sure you do. But if you don't, check it out, the CRKT Provoke. Just watch a video on YouTube and check out how it works. It is, it's got these... Um, it's a karambit that you hold in your hand with the, uh, with the, with your finger through the ring. And then you actuate it with your thumb and the blade pops out down the, uh, below your fist. And it is really cool. It, it works on two arms. There are no springs involved. It's just a detent and, and a bunch of pivots, four pivots. And, uh, well, I got to say, it's just a really, really beautifully engineered knife. It's very solid, very stout. Would be an excellent karambit if you're going to actually use it for, uh, you know, doing doing martial arts. It would be great for that. I, I see now they have a um, search and rescue edition of this where it comes on a Kydex sheath, which I could see uh, uh, being useful if you were really going to use this in a pinch because it's got one of the interesting features of this knife besides everything else is the clip. Uh, it sort of recesses and nestles into the handle uh, until you need it and you, you pinch an upper portion of it. And the lower portion pops out, and you can slide it onto your pant leg. Interesting idea. Uh, I'm not quite uh, sold on it um, utility-wise yet, but like I said, I just got this thing yesterday. But uh, if you're curious, if you like karambits, if you're interested in very interesting engineering on knives, this is a really unique thing and, and would, be a, would be a very, very decent uh, addition to anyone's collection. Let's hear that, uh, let's hear that flick again, if all you right, don't mind. All right, if I must. All right. So uh, Jim, Jim, nice. you can see this right now. It's pretty cool, isn't it? I mean, it's it's working on these two swinging arms, and it's yeah, just like cool. nothing I've ever seen before. Yeah, we'll try to. I'll try to remember to put a picture uh, in the show notes page that'll be on uh, 
thenifejunkie.com slash 75, thenifejunkie.com slash 75. You also mentioned uh, Thursday Night Knives with uh, guest co-host uh, Alex Dassault of Alex's Knife Box on uh, the YouTube channel. That was the uh, January 2nd edition. You can find that as well as past episodes of Thursday Night Knives and uh, also watch live every Thursday night if you go to thenifejunkie.com slash live. And, of course, a good buddy there, Alex. I encourage all of our listeners, if you're not subscribed to his YouTube channel, uh, please go do so so because he's got uh, lots of great videos. He is a man on a mission. His collection is incredible. And every time I talk to him, he's got new and amazing, interesting, off-the-beaten-path selections. He's, uh, he's, he's quite a collector and a great guy, so definitely check him out. Cool. A lot of stuff to talk about in Knife Life News coming up next. But first, I want to remind you that uh, this podcast is brought to you by QuickBooks Self-Employed. You know, first of the year, we start thinking, oh, got to probably pay taxes coming up shortly. Hopefully, you get some money back. But anyway, QuickBooks Self-Employed is your year-round tax solution. It's definitely a must-have for contractors, freelancers, knife makers, anyone who's self-employed. And if you go to the knifejunkie.com slash QB30, Knife Junkies will get a free 30-day trial of QuickBooks Self-Employed. Again, 30 days for free at the knifejunkie.com slash QB30. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you've got questions or comments, call the 24-7 Knife Junkie listener line at 724-466-4487. So, Jim, you may remember at the end of last year, uh, I, I had a list, a wish list of things I wanted to see from Cold Steel. Uh, three things in particular. Uh, first was a um, Kevlar umbrella sword. That is my, bu- my bullet- favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Total spy kit. It's a bulletproof umbrella that has a sword in, in, the, in it. Uh, the other thing I wanted to see was a Recon 1XL with a sax blade, a big straight-edged um, you know, worn cliffy kind of blade. And then the third thing I wanted to see was a wish that came true, Jim. I just saw it. They just released the news. It's a Voyager XL with a wavy bladed Chris blade. So that's a five and a half inch wavy bladed Chris. It's got two peaks and two valleys and it ends in a hook, which is exactly, exactly how that knife should be. And of course, Mr. Lynn Thompson knows what he's doing. He's a lifelong or a 30-year practitioner of Kali and sword arts and the Filipino martial arts. He knows he knows the way to optimize a crisp blade. And a, a few months back, I saw him in one of his YouTube videos, and he flashed one. He pulled it out, and he opened it up, and I said, that is a Voyager like none I've ever seen. That looks like it's a Chris, but that's Lynn Thompson. He could have just gone down to the shop and said, hey, some someone make me a crisp blade, and you know, been out the shop in 45 minutes with a brand new Voyager. But indeed, it was a prototype. And I'm very, very excited to see that they're coming out with that this year. Mm-hmm. So everybody, check out check out the Voyager XL with the wavy bladed Chris. Um, coming, they also have another Chris blade coming out. And it's one of the Lynn Thompson signature series, kind of like the uh, Voyager XL Vaquero with the serrated blade uh, of XHP. This year, it's going to be the Lynn Thompson tie light. So it's going to be an uh, extra la- or a large tie light. That's a six inch tie light with GRN handles, green GRN handles, the same color as the, uh, as the signature Voyager. And it will have a long, sinuous, wavy bladed crisp blade, uh, which is going to look so cool because, you know, that's the, that's sort of the updated Italian stiletto platform. And, uh, we we may have all seen historical pictures of a switchblade with the, with that Chris shaped blade, but they're rare and hard to find. And and to get one made in modern materials, this will be in forty four forty C, a steel that I'm not sure I've ever seen uh, cold steel use, at least not in a long time. So that's an interesting choice, and I'm interested to hear uh, why that in the age of all these uh, updated modernized super steels. So that'll be interesting to find out. Uh, another of the, uh, there are many other, uh, cold steel releases this year, uh, in the sword and axe and, and knife lineup. But I just want to mention one other that, that really, uh, pricked up my ears. Uh, the Formax Scout. Everyone knows the massive, uh, Andrew Demko designed Formax, uh, which, uh, came out a couple of years ago. I don't know, 2014, something like that. It's a big, heavy duty, 
Andrew Demko Cold Steel for 400 bucks. You know, they were making them uh, in Italy for a while and then making them in the United States. And they're, they put special care into them. Uh, they're, they're definitely special Cold Steel knives. Well, to me, that's a little bit beyond my reach. If I'm spending that money, I'm not spending it on a Cold Steel. But I love the design and I love the utility of that knife. So they're coming out with this Scout version which is a Formax uh, by all other definitions, except it's got a GRN handle and it's got OS 10 a steel. OS 10 they've been using instead of OS 8, and I guess it's two better than OS 8. I, I honestly don't really know what the difference is, but I, from what I remember hearing other people saying uh, on YouTube, OS 10 is a, uh, a definite um, step up in steel. So basically, if you like the Formax platform and you think it's a cool knife, but you just can't or don't want to lay down 450 bucks to get the real thing, or the original thing, I guess I should say, uh, this 4Max Scout will be a, a cool... I'm definitely going to have that in my Cold Steel right. large knife lineup. Okay. <laughs> well, and uh, I love the way you described uh, OS 8, OS 10, because that's the way I would have described it. It's it's too better. <laughs> <laughs> There's two more OSs to it. That's right. <laughs> hey, and uh, speaking of Cold Steel, I think you mentioned... Uh, on uh, one of the last podcasts, or maybe it was a Thursday Night Knives, a uh, year or two ago, the the recent change with Cold Steel and the catalog. Uh, are you talking about with the Steels? How they um, they came uh, re- out? Re- releasing the catalog? or Oh, oh, I'm sorry. That's uh, that's Spyderco we were talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah, my they, bad. Last year was their first year doing this. Um, uh, I can't remember what they call it, but it's like a delayed release. Instead of saying in January, look at these 20 amazing knives we're coming out with this year, but you can't get your hands on them till November, they just kind of tell you in November, boom, check out this new knife, and then they they, they, they drop okay. it and they, they do all the press then. Okay, gotcha. Well, we'll have a link to uh, Knife News uh, article about the Cold Steel 2020 lineup that, uh, as they say, balances new models with some line expansions. That'll go uh, more into depth about uh, all of the ones that uh, that Bob didn't cover. So, Cold Steel 2020. All right, what's up next? You want to talk about uh, SOG with some 2020 updates? I do. Another uh, article from Knife News I was perusing mentioned the updates uh, for SOG this year. SOG has had a speckled past, I think in general, or among knife nuts, and uh, and definitely for me, I'm, I've, I'm a sucker for their fixed blade knives especially the ones uh, before they started kind of incorporating modern materials. I love their stacked leather, you know, um, uh, SOG uh, knives. I did their, their Mac V SOG and, and the other traditional knives they've put forth. I, I've never been a fan of their folders, but this year it kind of looks like they're moving more into my wheelhouse, and I know that's what they were trying to do. So <laughs> uh, the Aegis is a... a, a, a a long-standing uh, big seller for them. Uh, they, they've kind of retooled it, and it still looks like an Aegis. It still got, has a very cool drop point blade. I always like that knife uh, blade. But the handle uh, looks simpler. They have a new thing they call the AT lock, which uh, is different from uh, an axis lock. I'll just say that. It's different from an axis lock. But uh, you kind of actuate it the same way, um, at least on one side. And uh, so it's got a different lock, and they're coming out with a bunch of different colors for the GR, and kind of, kind of cheering it up a little bit. You know, you could, you could say that the uh, the Sog folding lineup is a little bit dreary uh, historically. I think you know they're they're meant for use, and uh, maybe not so much uh, uh, in terms of aesthetic has gone into them. Uh, and now it's, it looks like they're kind of simplifying the design a little bit, uh, removing some of the Sog uh, kind of billboarding that they're famous for. And uh, putting some colored GRN on these handles and just kind of, I don't know, classing them up a little bit. I'm looking at, uh, they have this thing called the Ultra XR. It's a very simple looking, tough looking, classy knife with uh, carbon fiber handles. They they took the Flash, which uh, was a knife I was never fond of, and they totally redesigned it. And it looks really cool now. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, colored uh, this, I think this has G10 and D2 steel. I oh, know it is GRN. A variety of colors. Uh, a nice looking blade shape. And then they did the same with the Pentagon. Uh, the Pentagon has always been their kind of daggery uh, folder. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a folder version of their daggery little dagger boot, boot thing. They did a cool retooling on that. So to me, I got to say, uh, as, as not the, the biggest SOG folder fan, it's very, I like 
what I'm seeing. It's yeah. encouraging. The one thing I don't like, if you t- take a look at the Trident, uh, the Trident is their, um, well, it was their Bowie knife made for the Marines, uh, or for the, um, for the Navy. It's a, a different steel and, and a, a different, I think the stack leather handles were, were black or maybe it was black micarta. In any case, they made a folding version of it called the Trident. It's been a very famous, uh, popular folding Bowie over the last, uh, 10 to 12 years. But this one they have, they have, they have this giant slot cut out in the handle. Yeah. That's uh, what I was looking at. Yeah. Presumably you feed, uh, paracord in there and cut it without opening the blade or you or you feed a seat belt through there with the blade shut and and you cut it that way but i have to say like with those feeding channels where you where you feed material into a blade without being able to move the blade unless it is absolutely freshly razor sharp that shit doesn't that stuff just does not work i mean in my experience you need you need a little movement on the blade. You need to be able to change your angle and your pressure on the blade. And I, I just right. don't think that. And to me, it just looks like a liability. It looks like a place where the handle could snap on you if you were right. really going hard at it. Well, as I, I'm I'm looking at it as you were talking about it. I was like, what's wrong with that picture? Something <laughs> they they mess up on the handle there. They <laughs> did a Photoshop error or something. Yeah, yeah but it's you, you see what happens when the blade is closed. It's exposed in that one yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd say that's a misstep personally, but hey, what the hell do I know? I don't, I don't design uh, <laughs> knives for SOG, so that's right. Um, but cool looking blade shape though. Yeah, and you mentioned the Flash AT. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, the picture I'm looking at has a Carolina blue handle, and I'm a <laughs> I'm a Carolina boy, so I definitely love oh. the Tar Heel. So I I like the look of that, but I was. I was I was looking at that in relation to the Pentagon XR that you were talking about the mm-hmm. the daggery dagger as you call it, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know as I'm learning my my knife styles I like the uh, I like the look of the blade on the flash better than the the daggery dagger type me, blade. Me too, and and so that that is a drop point blade, um, mm, okay, which, which is a very I mean it's kind of a generic term. Almost anything can be a drop point, but that is definitely a drop point blade. And to me, that big sharpening choil, that's the space between the the heel of the blade and the handle. Mm, okay, you know right. that allows you to sharpen all the way to the edge of the to the end of the edge without getting a a weird curve at the end. Sometimes when it terminates against steel, uh, it's a it's a weird spot to sharpen so okay. i like that and i also think it makes it look cool kind of looks like a pirate knife or a chef's knife or something yeah yeah okay cool deal yep well cold steel new stuff for 2020 sog with some uh, new stuff for 2020 but we also need to talk a little bit about uh, crkt as well yeah yeah so as usual they have eight million new models coming out this year but there are two that i wanted to uh that that stuck out to me you know i love the fultz minimalist neck knife uh, that's the one that uh, I carry quite a bit, and I've mentioned quite a bit. And I love the way that handle just nestles between your 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 three fingers there. So they came out. So they have a variety of blade shapes. They have the uh, the Bowie shape. They have the recurve Tanto. They have the Karambit, and they have uh, Warncliffe, the Drop Point, and now they have the Cleaver. So if you want a little minimalist cleaver. Um, <laughs> Who doesn't need one of those? <laughs> exactly. You can get your 2.13 inch cleaver. Uh, from CRKT. I gotta say, I think I might just have to get it. It, okay, minimalists are only about 20, 20 bucks. And not to sound like a, a, a rampant materialist, but, you know, I, I've spent 20 bucks in, in much worse ways. So why not just instead add a minimalist to my collection? I'll have a, a, a little mini cleaver and, uh, you know, I'll be the talk of the town. I like the look of it. Yeah, it's pretty neat, isn't it? And yeah. you can see how your thumb could ride up right right to the end of the blade where it kind of swoops up. And it's got the little hole on it like a meat cleaver, like you're going to hang it on the wall. I love exactly. That. Exactly. <laughs> well, and I'm looking at the website as you were talking. It looks like it's uh, 40 bucks. Oh, it's 40 cleaver. Well, that's if you buy it from them. Oh, but that's it, true. If you buy it on the street, it's uh, bucks. If you know the Knife Junkies <laughs> connections. <laughs> yeah, Blade HQ. <laughs> knife Center. Right. GP okay. Knives. I'll, I'll mention them all. Okay. Well, it might as well. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we do have, uh, some affiliate relationships with, uh, some folks. So if you want to go to the knifejunkie.com slash knives, you'll find, uh, some knives for sale there by some, uh, manufacturers and others that we have, uh, like I said, uh, affiliate relationships with. And what that means is that if you buy a knife from that page using our link, 
you'll pay the same price of what the manufacturer or the, the reseller has, but we get a small commission. Just helps support the podcast and the channel and the website and all that kind of good stuff. Or you can also, if you want to, go to theknifejunkie.com slash shop Amazon or theknifejunkie.com slash shop eBay. And that's uh, links to Amazon and eBay. Again, affiliate links. If you buy anything from there, uh, we'll get a small commission. But again, it won't affect the price that you'll pay. Just help support us. Theknifejunkie.com slash shop Amazon or theknifejunkie.com slash shop eBay. And Bob, I think it was this past Thursday night, uh, you and Alex talked about uh, Kun Wu knives. Address that a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is... um. Well, it's a new knife maker uh, out of China, new, um, presumably high-end knife maker out of China. And uh, I saw an article in Knife News about it, and it just struck me, um, and uh, perhaps it struck the, the author as well. Um, but it's just kind of an interesting thing. This this uh, company, they have a, a knife design. It's based on Shimano part. It's based on um, some of the parts, the cool modern parts on a, on a racing bike. And, um, I, I don't see that from the design. I, um, I see a, a very run of the mill design. Okay. My whole point of bringing this up is they don't even have money yet for their first production knife. So I'm not exactly sure how, how you bust into a scene that's, uh, populated by Riot and Wee Knives and Reich and, uh, and Best Tech with a design and kind of put it forth publicly. Um, w- when you don't have the funds to actually get it going, because I mean that's a crowded market. It's a uh, well, I should say it's a it's a very competitive field right there in right. China, producing these high end folders. It kind of seems like an interesting misstep to come out before you're funded to even make one production knife, unless unless you're doing a kickstart. I don't know. What do you think? Well, I was going to say, you know, there's a lot of business models that do the Kickstarter or, you know, GoFundMe or whatever, you know, to to fund their business to get started, you know, create a product or, you know, some type of thing, uh, you know, et cetera, with a goal of raising X. And then the, the initial funders get that product. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not opposed to it because it, um, you know, it, it's kind of commonplace now in, in hmm. the, the business world. Or, or more more commonplace. That's uh, that's actually that's an interesting point. It would it would be actually uh, very. I'd love to talk to the people involved uh, in this just to actually. Uh, I sound critical, and and I guess uh, I shouldn't. Uh, it'd be interesting to find out uh, their strategy. And, yeah, and, yeah. And it's because it's a little confusing to me, uh, especially with um, especially with the competition. I guess I guess maybe this is a good way. I don't know. You could see it both right. ways. Uh, you either come out of the gate super, super strong, or you come out and say, "Hey, look at our stuff. It's great. Help us, right. help us into this community." Well, if and if you just look at, uh, you know, just take China out of it, it's a heavily competitive field, regardless. So, I mean, you got to do something to stand out, and uh, you know, it, it, in reading the article, it looks like they've got a team of four guys, all with up to twenty-five years of experience in the knife world. So mm-hmm. they're they're not knife newbies like myself, so my initial reaction is it sounds like a uh, a good way to start business to to get into yeah. the business side of it. But yeah, it would definitely be interesting uh, to uh, to talk to Kun Wu and see uh, kind of what's their thinking process and and what led them in this direction. I guess you know what actually the way you put it, yeah, I, I think. I think you're right about that. I don't. My my initial reaction was to bristle. I was like, ah, another, another <laughs> awesome knife company. I have to keep up with or or whatever. But they they're not even here yet. But but the way you're laying that down, that is the way a lot of people start their businesses. Yeah, uh, and and they bootstrap it either with a Kickstarter campaign or bootstrap it themselves or bootstrap it with <laughs> a credit card. So exactly, Jim. Who among us has not bootstrapped it? <laughs> I bootstrapped a lot of stuff. That's Kun Wu, problem. come on the podcast. Let's talk about it. Would you say yeah. you bootstrap a lot? I bootstrap a lot of stuff, and <laughs> I, I get in trouble with my wife sometimes for bootstrapping stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, but anyway. Fortune favors the bold, sir. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, we'd love to know what you think about uh, Kun Wu Knives and this concept of kind of kick-starting their business. Uh, call the listener line at 724 724- 
724-466-4487. That number again is 724-466-4487. Love to hear your thoughts, comments, uh, and again, if you call, please leave us your name, your uh, website, your Instagram handle, your YouTube page, you know, whatever you, you want to do to promote your yourself and your business. And as Bob and I have uh, committed, uh, we will do our best to get comments in the show as you give them to them, uh, give them to us uh, each and every week here on the podcast. So we would definitely love to uh, to hear from you. Yeah. Let me know. Am I being a, am I being a curmudgeon about this? Is that just uh, am I am I close minded? Let, let me know. Hmm. Well, maybe not just about this. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> I won't go there. Let's uh, give a minute to uh, talk about video, Bob. I know this is an audio podcast, and uh, folks can't see the uh, the CRKT provoke that you keep flicking open and you know, <laughs> everything going on as we're talking. But uh, you've got a great YouTube channel, a lot of videos. Want to kind of talk about that and encourage listeners to go to the knifejunkie.com slash YT subscribe to get subscribed to the Knife Junkies YouTube channel because not only will you uh, uh, get the videos and that type of thing, but be sure to click that little bell notification because uh, the Knife Junkie goes live, at least for now, every Thursday night on Thursday Night Knives, and uh, you don't want to miss that. So definitely wanted folks to uh, to know or at least remember, Bob, about the Knife yeah. Junkie YouTube channel. So this summer I was doing a lot of uh, posting regularly these collection selections where I'm going through my collection and cataloging what I have with little three to five minute videos. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of it's because I was planning on selling a lot of them off. I have sold quite a, you know, for me, quite a few, I guess about (laughs) 10 in the last few months, you know, since summer, I guess that's, that's a lot for me. Right. Um, but so now I have a, a catalog of everything that I've had or everything that I had at that point. And um, I stopped uh, for a while, I think, uh, because my work entails making videos. And I think it was kind of like I was the pizza maker who didn't want to smell pizza for a while. Right, right. But uh, I think I'm going to start a season two of the collection selection because I have so many more knives. Um, you know, kind of kind of getting to the end of my high-end folder collection. But I have a bunch of fixed blades and swords and hatchety things uh, that I want to show off, too. So I'll be I'll be doing some of that. And you used to do uh you used to do pocket check videos too for a while. Pocket check, yes, I did, I did. Uh, but then I found myself altering what I was carrying that day for the video I was going to be making. Mm, not and for some not reason, really, not really wanting it in your pocket, but just had to yeah, carry yeah. it for the video. Okay, I had I had an ethical problem with that. Oh, so. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> no, so uh, I keep saying I'm going to do a how to video, but I want to do a how to build a cheap strop, and I will do that. I mm. resolve. I have the materials. I just have to get off my. I took us and do it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot coming in the live videos. Um, oh, yeah. They're are, fun. Oh, man, they are fun. And and people, uh, viewers are joining in and commenting, and uh, it's just been a lot of fun. I've gotten to know some of the people through Thursday Night Knives that I know on Instagram, uh, like Edwin, uh, Edwin with the awesome Emerson collection, Edwin Cowell, mm-hmm. and, and others. It's been spirited whiskey. Always, right. always has some spirited comments. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and probably some whiskey as he's watching. <laughs> probably, yeah, exactly. Some spirit. Well, uh, you mentioned Thursday Night Knives. The uh, next edition of Thursday Night Knives is uh, coming out on Thursday, January 9th. And depending on when you're listening to this podcast, it'll either be tomorrow or tonight. But if you miss it, you can find it on thenifejunkie.com slash live. That's where we have the current uh, live broadcast of Thursday Night Knives, plus an archive that you can find all the past episodes, thenifejunkie.com slash live. That's for Thursday Night Knives, which, uh, you know, barring major holidays or uh, major illness or whatever, is going to be every week, every Thursday night at 10 p.m., and that's Eastern time. So 10 p.m. Eastern would be 7 p.m. California time. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, whatever that is, central time, mountain time, et cetera. So you can figure that out. But Thursday night, 10 p.m. for Thursday Night Knives. And, uh, you know, I'm behind the scenes, Bob, but I got to tell you, it's it's really a, a fun show to listen. And you mentioned the comments and the um, engagement from, listen- from listeners and watchers. That's, I think, what makes this show special. So please watch Thursday Night Knives, comment, ask questions, because this past Thursday night, we had a uh, uh, kind of an outline of where we wanted to go. 
but a lot of it involved questions mm -hmm. from viewers yep. and going down that rabbit hole and, you know, Alex, oh, show me this knife, Alex. You know, viewers were saying, show me this, show me this. So he went and got that knife. So yep. that's kind of what we want to make it, get get the get the viewer involved. Yep. And uh, so this coming week, we're going to have Metal Complex on. Uh, he'll be co-hosting. We've had Zell, uh, Zellrick, you know, Terrell Todd, you know him as Zellrick, Zellrick 42. 42. Uh, he's been co-host. He's going to be back on. Uh, these are great guys to have on the show because they have such a breadth of knowledge that differs from mine, and we can really nerd out on knives. And right. so join us. We know you're capable. Next show coming up again uh, tomorrow night or tonight, Thursday, January 9th. But again, every week, uh, Thursdays, 10 p.m. Eastern. And uh, one of my favorite parts of the show not only is to uh, uh, see what your special guest co-host kind of features off in their pocket check or talk about some of their collection knives, but it's the knife fight. That's where uh, <laughs> yeah. that's where you pick two knives to go against each other, two styles, whatever, and uh, e each of you have to defend one of the knives, which might be th not the one you want to defend, yeah. but uh, th that's a pretty cool segment there. Yeah, we have, we have fun with that. Yeah. So if listeners uh, have any suggestions about uh, which knives should be in the knife fight, well, join us on Thursday Night Knives at uh, thenifejunkie.com slash live. Leave a comment uh, about uh, what you would see in, like to see in a knife fight, and uh, we'll make uh, plans to, to do that in an upcoming show. You can find, again, all the podcasts, Thursday Night Knives, uh, knives for sale, resources, everything, right on the Knife Junkie website at thenifejunkie.com. So be sure to visit that. For Bob, the Knife Junkie DeMarco, I'm Jim, the Knife Newbie Person. I want to thank you for joining us for episode number 75 of the Knife Junkie podcast, which can be found at thenifejunkie.com slash 75. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.